Welcome to this presentation on ODP.NET 21C. I'll introduce to you a couple of new features in this release, and you'll be able to use these features whether you're using ODP.NET Core, Managed ODP.NET, or Unmanaged ODP.NET. The first new feature is a new JSON column data type that we've introduced in Database 21C. It now uses an internal binary JSON format. By using this binary JSON format, we've seen much better performance in terms of reads and updates. In our internal testing, we've seen four times faster reads, and updates occur 10 times faster. For an ODP.NET developer to use this JSON column format, they don't have to do anything special. They can use it transparently. They can even use their existing JSON code and just change the column format and the reason why is there are no special APIs needed and the conversion all occurs implicitly. The second major feature is client-initiated continuous query notification. Now to understand what CICQN is, let me tell you a little bit about the traditional continuous query notification or CQN. Now traditional CQN, it allows you to take a cache result set, something like a .NET data set, and ensure that it will not be out of sync with your database results. If you select a set of results and then you, someone else goes and updates those results on the database side, the database will send a notification to the client to indicate your cache results are now out of sync. You should go and update them so that the end users will be sure to have the latest set of data. As a developer, you would write the logic to do the update whenever you get the notification. CICQN was built with the knowledge nowadays people are using clouds and with firewalls between their middle tiers and their database site. CICQN is just the same conceptually as traditional CQN, just that we now support the cloud and firewall scenarios. In this traditional CQN scenario, notifications were supported through a listening endpoint on the client side. And obviously with cloud and firewalls, that generally may not be possible. So what we've done instead is we've provided a dedicated connection for each pool so that CICQN notifications will be guaranteed to be received by the client side. That is a change in the architecture of how CICQN works versus CQN. Now all messages are in process versus the CQN out of process listing endpoint. By default, ODP.NET will try to use CQN. If you want to use CICQN, you just have to make one code change, Oracle configuration, use client initiated CQN and set that to true. ODP.NET will then convert over the CICQN method to enable all your notifications. So let's see this in action. We'll do a demonstration of the JSON and CICQN functionality. So here I am in Visual Studio. I'm connected to an Oracle Database 21C autonomous database. And we have in here one table called J purchase order and a PO document here. And this J purchase order is uh, just a simple table. And this PO document is a, as we'll see in the properties, a JSON column. It, of course, uses the new binary JSON format. So we are going to select from it to show you that it's just like selecting from any other column. No special APIs are needed to use this binary JSON format. It's stored as binary JSON, but you'll get it back as text. You'll be able to process it just like any other string you would get in .NET. So the query we're going to perform is select PO document from J purchase order. And then we're going to work on connecting. So we're going to configure our cloud connection here. And then we're going to enable CICQN, use client-initiated CQN to true. So that's all you need to do to enable CICQN. And then from there, we'll then connect to the database output that we've connected, and then set up continuous query notification. We'll create an Oracle dependency attached to the command. We'll indicate that we'll have this notification handler registration continue to exist even after the first notification. Then we will have an on change event handler register so that ODP.NET knows what to do when it does receive such an event. And the rest of it is retrieving the JSON. So provide the command, create a data adapter, create a data set, fill that data set, and then output the results to the screen. It's just a two string call for this JSON column. That's all. Uh, just to let you see the event handler, what we're going to do is very similar to what you just saw there, which is when the event handler is called, just say change detected. And then we just do the same data adapter, data set, fill, and then I'll put the results to the screen. So let's see this in action. We see that we successfully connected to the database, and we see the JSON document successfully retrieved. The last updated is here. 
And what we will do now is we're going to change that entry with another connection. So I'm also connected from the tool side into the same database. And we are just going to change the last updated with the current sys date. And by doing that, we will then trigger the event handler and read retrieve the results. So let's take a look at the new result. We see that the change was detected and that the last updated has been changed. If we run it again, we see that the change has been detected again and the last updated has been updated as well. That's the JSON binary column format and CICQN in a nutshell. You'll be able to access the sample code via a link in the description of this YouTube video. So you can try this out at home and see what it's like for yourself.